Hi, this is Sabin Bharti and we are here at Cloud Native Con and KubeCon in Barcelona, Spain. And today we have two guests. One is uh, Ben Singleman. You are uh, CEO of Lightstep. No promotion whatsoever. <laughs> Maybe next time with a senior CEO, right? Um, yeah, I, I haven't had a meeting with my manager in years, so I don't know who, the, who they are, but someday I'll lobby Hopefully. them for a promotion. Yeah. Uh, and we have um, Morgan McLean. You are product manager at Google. Correct. Yeah. And today we're going to talk about um, open telemetry. First, I'm curious, what is telemetry in terms of you know, a cloud native world? Can you explain that? Telemetry is an old word. It predates the, you know, the computers that we use. But it's basically just the idea of data about a system that you're getting out of the system. Uh, for a cloud native application or something running in Kubernetes microservices, typically telemetry is some combination of uh, distributed traces, metrics, logs, Exception reports, things like that. So, so are there like some? You mentioned some like some core components that telemetry is made of in this context. And if yes, what are those? Yeah. So, I mean, I guess for Open Telemetry as a project specifically, we're primarily focused initially on distributed traces and metrics. Um, there will be other signals that we incorporate in the future as well. But the idea is that any data that describes the behavior of a system is essential to understanding it, especially since you can't afford to recompile and redeploy your application in production. So the telemetry data is literally all you have to understand what's going on in production. So it's of the utmost importance in today's applications, which are quite complicated and, and behave in chaotic ways uh, when you least expect it. And can you just quickly go a bit into the past and history of open telemetry? Why was the project created? And who were the stakeholders back in those days? Yeah. And how mm -hmm. the project has evolved? Yeah, so in many ways, open telemetry is a merger of two different projects. So we've got uh, open tracing, uh, which was primarily an API focused on describing and collecting distributed traces, and open census. Uh, open census provided an API and implementation for collecting distributed traces and metrics. Uh, open tracing was started at Lightstep. I think that's correct. Lightstep, in conjunction with a few other open source projects. Yeah, and Open Census was started at Google, uh, and so the projects have been running pretty well on their own for the last two years. Uh, and I think, as Ben has said in other interviews or in other press engagements, like both of them have what we'd call escape velocity, uh, where they're you know even if the founders had stepped away, even if the organizations who'd started them had stepped away, they would have likely continued on their own. Um, but one of the challenges that we had faced on open census, and I think Ben had mentioned they'd faced on open, open tracing, uh, was that simply the presence of two similar projects with similar lifespans, with even sort of similar members of the community involved, uh, proved to be problematic at points, not for the projects themselves, but uh, just in terms of getting, being able to integrate with uh, the things that generate telemetry. So whether that's web frameworks, uh, storage clients, um, uh, you know, like any sort of API, uh, any sort of client libraries used for an API, and because the maintainers of those would be confused about which one they should partner or integrate with, and so starting last year, we came together, uh, worked out a way to merge the projects into one, and so this new project, Open Telemetry, uh, effectively just subsumes the old project. So that Open Telemetry is really about um, describing and collecting that data. Uh, and then handing it off to other projects. Open Telemetry does not want to be a project that takes the data all the way end to end into some kind of user visible solution. Um, the intention is to, to keep that um, uh, quite portable. So you can yeah. use Open Telemetry with one or many different downstream open source projects or vendors. So I, I do want to make sure people understand that the purpose of the project is to portably generate very high quality telemetry with minimal effort. Uh, for an end user. In the context of the CNCF ecosystem, like open telemetry is a great way to collect data and send it to something like uh, Jaeger or, or Prometheus. Yes. Mm -hmm. So talk about you now what is the scope of open telemetry project? So open telemetry is a project it, it has uh, scope across several different types of telemetry data. So not just traces, but also metrics, and yeah. eventually other signals like logs and things like stack traces yeah. probably in the future. And then there are also several layers to the project. There are these raw APIs that are very thin, narrow, and flexible. A reference implementation in every language, that's a high quality SDK yeah. that will be adopted internally at Google, it's that, that kind of code quality. Uh, and then other utilities that are involved with gathering and uh, making that sort of data available at scale. Um, but open telemetry does stop at that point and does not provide UIs and fully, uh, fully realize end-to-end -end solutions. That's something that's yep. meant to partner with open telemetry. 
Um, yeah. And there are other CNCF projects. You know, as, as you've followed the last 10 or 20 years, like the journey of web services, um, or, or what we now call like cloud native or cloud scale apps, like previously you'd go and write a large monolith, typically. And you know, throughout the, the late 90s, early 2000s, there's a huge ecosystem of tools that sprung up to help you, you know, diagnose those, debug them, and understand how they work. Whether that's like profiling tools, transaction tracing tools, logging tools, or so on. But as companies have moved to these more cloud-native architectures, Kubernetes is one example, but just generally having these more highly distributed systems of microservices, uh, a lot of those old tools don't work as well as they used to, either because they require you to be running your app in like a test or offline environment, which now is somewhat difficult because you can't replicate the entire application, uh, or just because things are more finely broken out. And so, like for example, distributed tracing, which allows you to watch uh, transactions as they're traced across multiple systems, not just a single system. Previously, you wouldn't really need, because if you had a big monolith, you don't need it. And so we've seen this wave where originally like companies like Google and, and other sort of large web scale companies develop these tools internally. And now that the rest of the industry is adopting these same platforms, like Kubernetes, uh, they have a need for these tools. And so if we want to dive a little deeper, like so I mentioned distributed tracing. Distributed tracing lets you track a transaction across multiple services. A classic example of distributed tracing is uh, I have an e-commerce site. Uh, I go on it. I click the checkout button on my cart. This you know, probably generates a request to some front-end service. That front-end service talks to a cart service, a checkout service, probably then calls out to an API like Stripe or something where it's actually running the credit card information. Uh, it probably also calls out to a product catalog service and so on. And so distributed tracing lets you visualize that. Right, that entire chain of transactions. So you can analyze their latency, you can understand how they work, and so on. Um, we also do application metrics. Uh, that's you know, another really popular thing. Uh, app, uh, in the context of CNCF, that's like what Prometheus does, particularly for backend. Um, but that lets you analyze like, whether it's latency of requests that go through your system, and it also lets you uh, create custom metrics. Uh, that's Open Telemetry focuses on distributed tracing and application metrics at the moment. Uh, as Ben mentioned earlier, uh, I think we're going to spread that across different types of telemetry just because the name, like the reason we chose the name telemetry is because our long-term goal is just being able to make it very, very easy for developers to capture all of the useful information that's coming out of their app that's related to its operation and management. What was the point at which you, know, you realized that, hey, we have to work together and bring these yeah. Because this came from two different companies. Yeah, I think last year, I, I don't remember if it was Ben or someone else who had reached out to the CNCF just pointing out, hey, there's these two projects and, and you know, there's a lot of people in these communities who know and work with each other on other things. But the biggest challenge that you know, certainly we'd face in Open Census, the biggest challenge you'd face in Open Tracing was just the presence of two projects causing confusion in the community. Uh, and so we had a, a sort of meet and greet meeting at, at mm -hmm. the CNCF headquarters. Uh, and so for the following few months, we started talking much more seriously uh, initially around just like making open census and open tracing compatible. Uh, and then I think, uh, I think really smartly, uh, people in both communities have said, well, you know, still if they're compatible, that's still, there's a lot of dependencies. Like, why don't we just make this one community, one big project? Mm -hmm. uh, and then so over the preceding months, um, that actually occurred. And so we've gone and built a governance board. Um, we've built uh, technical committees and there's people from both communities going and working on the merged open telemetry clients. And it's important to to understand that Lightstep and Google are involved in this, but I mean at that meeting with yes, yeah, yeah. Datadog and New Relic and Microsoft. Dynatrace and Microsoft. Yeah. I mean a lot of, of vendors as well as open source projects, uh, Jaeger is an example, they've been with open tracing since the very beginning, yeah. um, that are all collaborating on this project. And the governance structure is actually designed to prevent any one organization or company from single handedly pushing yeah. stuff through. It would be very difficult for that, or if not impossible for yeah. that to happen. When you were building the governance, is, did you follow the CNCF model or you came up with your own governance? How does that work? Yeah, it's a good question. So we've tried to separate the governance from the technical committee. And the uh, governing seed committee was basically two people from Open Census who yep were technical and there from the beginning. So Sergey. Sergey from Microsoft, Bogdan from Google. Yeah, and then two people from Open Tracing who were also there from the beginning, myself and Yuri Shkuro, who is the, um, he was kind of the founder of Jaeger and also co-founder of Open Tracing. And then we wanted a fifth party who was neutral, and that was Sarah Novotny, um, I mean, who was on Google Payroll, but is, um, 
part of the CNCF world and was there for the creation of the Kubernetes governance. And so she actually was, in my mind, the brains of the operation yeah. in that she had uh, gone through this very delicate governance creation process for both Kubernetes and for you know, kind of trying to reattach the node community. Uh, she was oh, yeah. involved with that as yeah. well. So she'd been involved in things that were far more complicated and acrimonious than this was. Um, and actually, I think was pleasantly surprised by how easy it was and everyone just wanted to make it work. Yeah. But, uh, but she did set up a really nice model for us that's based on the Kubernetes uh, governance largely. We've obviously made some adjustments for our project, but, um, but many of the uh, aspects of who gets to vote, who can run, that sort of stuff is, is borrowed from the Kubernetes governance. And then we've taken the CNCF code of conduct, and then we have SIGs that are per language that uh, run just based on you know technical strategy. So you just pick and choose what was the best for the project that you thought, yeah. not just you know getting some you know. And by we, a lot of it's been uh, uh, the whole community which was around. Yeah, well, and also Sarah uh, yeah, picked, so, and she, had picked and choose right. yeah. she had way more experience. Yeah, that's what I mean. The rest yeah. Of yeah. Us. yeah, I mean, yeah. I think our we were very clear that our goal is to create governance that would prevent anyone from being a BDFL. Uh, it's not that kind of thing. It's supposed to be you know a proper structure with you know an odd number of people with rotating elections yeah. and so on and so forth so that's the structure that we've chosen excellent and by bringing these projects together by building you know this kind of government model what are the benefit of course everybody is aware of you know when you but what benefits you clearly see or merits you see for the for either the users or for the community which is developing yeah I, I think like to be clear like open census and open tracing were already really open projects and so i, I don't think there were too many accusations of either of them being like sort of like biased towards any specific vendor. Um, but you know, certainly having a balanced committee uh, will should alleviate any possible concerns of that with open telemetry. Uh, I think the 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 biggest benefit of merging the communities though is is just the breadth of integrations that we're gonna get. Like a project focused on telemetry is only as good as the telemetry that it pulls out. And for open telemetry, much like open census and open tracing, that telemetry is dependent upon integrations that we have with various web frameworks, client libraries for like cloud APIs, storage clients, and so on. And so we desperately need more and more of those integrations. To be clear, we have a lot of them to begin with, but that by merging into one project, we can really focus both our community and just the general open source community and general technology community around supporting this single set of libraries and APIs so that various vendors can get that data out. Yeah, and I think I agree with all of that. And the governance structure that we've put in place, in my mind, is another way of instilling confidence in the end user community. Yeah. Not just that you wouldn't be swindled or something. I don't think anyone involved yeah. in the project is going to swindle it's anyone. It's open source. You can but, fork it. Yeah. But, uh, but more that, um, that if for some reason, you know, Lightstep got acquired by a private equity firm or Google deprioritized this project, the thing would be totally fine. Yeah. You know? So this is a bigger than any one company or even any three companies and will be something that you can rely on for a long time to come. And I think the portability and the durability of the instrumentation is something that's a big part of the value proposition for open telemetry. So I think the governance actually does help to reinforce that confidence. I think it also, for other vendors in the space, I think it also gives them more of an incentive to to support the project mm -hmm. because, you know, like it's not just one or two big, you know, tech companies running the show. It's, it's that's, a well That's a really good point. Yeah, yeah, I think that the the vendors involved, you know, despite the fact that we're all out there marketing to the same buyers, we're kind of chummy and friendly with each other. Uh, but there's a certain amount of uh, healthy skepticism about yeah. everyone's intentions, and I think creating these sorts of structures can help vendors actually. You know, kind of lock arms and these sorts of efforts, and and that that kind of increased trust between the the participants involved in these projects makes them go faster and, and move more smoothly as well. You, you mentioned you know, escape velocity, so this is this is something tricky for a company because sometimes companies may want some control over the project, so it's tied to them. Versus you are saying that you know projects should have escape velocity, so even if you move out, the community takes over. So what value do you see? I mean, Lightstep's relationship to open tracing and to open telemetry, and I think Google's relationship to open census and open telemetry, um, we're, you know, the two of us are here, but there are many other organizations that yeah. are involved in these projects. We, I think the word standard has, has become a bit of a dirty word, so I should instead say something like common API or common framework, but, but it serves the same structural purpose as uh, standard in the sense that it uh, allows 
application developers and framework developers and infrastructure developers to uh, amortize the cost of instrumenting their applications um, with this thing that has broad support. And what that allows is for our industry to get high quality distributed telemetry uh, with a much lighter lift. And that is a market making thing. It benefits many players. Uh, I mean, to be clear, Lightstep does benefit uh, if we have high quality telemetry, but all of our competitors benefit as well. And I think we that's actually why we see our competitors are actually our collaborators and our partners in both of these projects. Yeah. And in that respect, we we share a common interest to improve the quality of data coming out of applications. And that's what these projects are about. So it's not a typical open core project where Lightstep isn't you know, building enterprise features on top of open tracing or open telemetry. I mean, it's just a data source. And, and uh, it's a very important data source that's very difficult to execute, which is yes. why it's a big project with lots of people on it. But it's just a data source. So it, it's, not, it's not comparable to something, you know, like, I don't know, Kubernetes or Kafka or Cassandra or whatever. It's not that kind of project. Vendors just have a strong interest in, in getting as much data out as possible, especially like a lot of vendors these days, they pride themselves on the analytics they can do on top of metrics or traces or other telemetry that comes mm -hmm. out. They're going to want as much as possible. And if they're confident that their analytics are the best, it shouldn't be an issue that everybody's yeah. getting access to it. Yeah, we really think of open telemetry as being the next major version of open tracing yeah. and open census. It's best to think of it as a version upgrade. It's not something that uh, tomorrow we're announcing open telemetry on stage at KubeCon, but it's not like tomorrow we're immediately deprecating all yeah, of open tracing and open census. Those projects are still vital, and in fact, they're still the best practice for instrumenting code yeah. tomorrow. Um, by the end of the year, the best practice will shift to open telemetry, uh, but we will maintain backwards compatibility with both open tracing and open census and uh, keep that compatibility guarantee for over two years after the projects are in read-only mode. So it's not like, um, it, again, it's, it's more akin to a version upgrade than, than a, like a third standard or something like that. Right. So will you encourage or support uh, users to, to move to open telemetry? Or? Yes, yes. Yeah, so, one, once the, so we've done a lot of work on the Java API, and so that'll be the, the first one that's available. Um, and certainly, as, as Ben mentioned, like by the end of this year, once all the versions are available, like yes, anyone writing new code, anyone writing new integrations should definitely use the open telemetry APIs. And we're, we're not going to be doing you know, work on the existing open transis, census or open tracing APIs. Uh, Mighty well, like security issues are like some, like, mm -hmm. some like, major problem. But customers who have already made an investment in open tracing or open census, whether it's for integrations that generate telemetry or their own apps that they're running, uh, there is going to be a compatibility layer they can use with the new implementations uh, so that they can continue just running as normal and they can even take open telemetry without having to go rewrite any parts of their code that in integrated with it. New code should use the new APIs then. And how easy would it be to, to move, to upgrade to the new version? Um, quite easy. We yeah. did this actually in open tracing uh, previously. We've had major version upgrades with breaking changes where we've built a bridge that supported both old and new instrumentation in the same process. And it's exactly the same approach here. So you do have to wrap uh, the open tracing, uh, it's called a tracer, it's just the term that we use in the code. You have to wrap the tracer in this shim, uh, which is a one line change, but it's not a difficult migration by any means. Um, the uh, I think, you know, when we designed Open Telemetry, the people involved uh, have had collectively decades of experience with yeah. these sorts of things, and we really wanted to go back and do a greenfield thing where we built the system that made the most sense based on first principles, and we resisted that urge and instead made our entire sole focus to make sure that we could achieve backwards compatibility, which is really the most important thing to make the migration work is to have everyone aligned in open tracing yep. and open census and to ensure backwards compatibility. So that is literally the first, second, third design goal for 2019. I think eventually once we've achieved that sort of convergence, we can talk about you know, introducing new data streams and new, com new capacities and things like that. Yeah. But the market has not been concerned about that. They've just been concerned with the fact there are two projects. Yeah. And we're trying to fix that problem. Right. Thanks, Ben and Morgan, for yeah. talking today. Thank you for and, having uh, us. Yeah, and I look forward to seeing you again. Thanks yeah. a lot.